Welcome, everyone, to the Change Starts Here podcast. I'm your host, Dustin Odom. And on this week's episode, we welcome Dr. Matt Olson, who is the director of the Taylor Leadership Institute at the University of North Florida. And our goal with this conversation today, and I, I think it's clear that Matt's goal or Dr. Olson's goal is to change the way people think about leadership and change the way people approach leadership. And particularly when it comes to higher education, oftentimes, when you say the word leadership or we need to develop leaders, a lot of people think that as a soft language that's not gonna have much impact. Well, we dive in today uh, to learn about the impact that a focused approach on developing each person's leadership skills, finding their strengths and teaching kids to lean into those strengths as opposed to always worry about where their gaps are is a way that not only helps them build confidence and vision for the future, but also help them get the academic impact and, you know, for the athletes that he works with, the on the field success that they were looking for. This conversation is really interesting given that he's, you know, had a 15 plus year um, experience as an educator from elementary schools to an administrator. And now he's been working with in the higher ed world for a long time after he got his PhD and his passion for helping people identify their strengths, own those strengths, and also think about how they can be lifting up people around them every day. He talked at the end about the importance of watering the flowers around them and not getting caught up in the weeds. And so this conversation is just really unique. If you're someone who, you know, has struggled even either with your thinking about what leadership is, uh, whether it's too soft of a topic or not, or when you think about higher education or, you know, as your, your kids develop through K-12 or high school, if you're thinking about how do we do that or how, how do we help develop kids as leaders, this is a really interesting conversation. We dive into some of those specifics of things that we can do now. And so, as always, if you subscribe, thank you. If you haven't, please hit the subscribe button. And as you're listening to this, if you, if you think there's even just a little short excerpt from the conversation from Matt that could help friends, family, anybody that you know, acquaintances, please send it to them. Uh, our goal is just to use these conversations to help uplift, uplift others as they try to be the best versions of themselves. So as always, thank you for your support. Thank you for being a loyal listener. And I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as me because Matt is a very, very genuine person who cares deeply about the development of people and all people, not just people he works with, but all people around him. And so he's, uh, you'll, you'll feel sincerity from the first moment we start talking. So again, thanks for being a listener. Uh, enjoy this conversation. Matt, uh, thank you so much for being here with us today. We're excited to talk to you. Thanks so much, Justin. Happy to be here. Yeah. So the first question is the same for everybody. Who are you and what do you love about what you do? Oh, wow. Great question. Uh, so, Dr. Matt Olson, I am the director of the Taylor Leadership Institute at the University of North Florida in Jacksonville, uh, also an associate professor of leadership, um, and ultimately, um, I, I have the coolest job in the world. I get to work with students, student athletes, um, business leaders, and really preaching and teaching leadership and how it can uh, help people to become the best versions of themselves. Um, and it's so much fun to, to see the positive impact the leadership can have. Yeah. So when you say, I mean, again, essentially you're a leadership expert. I'm, I bet there's a lot of people listening to this podcast that also would like to be considered a leadership expert one day. How, how do you end up here? What, what's the keys to, uh, you know, landing in the position that you've gotten to? Well, um, it's, it's interesting journey and, and it's really, um, really started with, with um, the Covey resources, Covey seven habits. I was getting my PhD at the university of Florida, go Gators. Um, <laughs> and I, as part of my work, I went through a, a seven habits training and um, it, a light bulb went on in terms of my original goal was to, to go back into K through 12 education, where I was a teacher, a school principal, and after going through the seven habits training, I was working with so many um, student athletes at the University of Florida, and they actually asked me to say, we need a class, we need a resource, we need something that can help equip um, students with those leadership skills that employers are looking for. Um, leadership is the number one skill employers want um, in potential employees. So, you know, why not create an actual class that equips students with those skills. 
Um, and we started using the seven habits back in 2008, 2009. And it was, it was absolutely startling in some ways to see the almost immediate impact. Finally, a class or a, a training about them rather than about content mm. that so many college courses are about. Um, and it really, we saw gains in our students almost immediately. They changed, some of them changed their career path, some of them increased GPAs. Um, they felt more confident. Um, so then I started to really want to, I, I wanted to be that expert in the field of leadership. So my focus switched from K through 12 leadership to the study of leadership in a variety of different fields, whether it be working with the CEO, Olympic athletes to, um, you know, elementary school principals. And um, it's pretty amazing to see that the, the recipe for success worked every time, regardless of that setting. Um, and so since then, I've been writing books about it, publishing, presenting around the world and working with, with some of the greatest people on earth, helping them, um, really to see the greatness in themselves. I and mean, it's, it's almost like a dog chasing his tail it already has it. Yep. And what leadership development and leadership training does is really, um, uncovering and unearthing those great superpowers, strengths, talents that everyone has in them and really allowing them to harness it to um, do great things. So when you talk about like a, re a recipe for success, and again, I think any chef is not trying to give away everything. I am curious, what are some of those components uh, that, you know, you would work with every potential leader on or current leader on? Um, the idea of, of, you know, and I'll use this a lot with, with the folks that I work with every thing for, you know, I've worked as an executive coach to, um, you know, working with athletic teams, the idea of what are your strengths and talents? Let's focus on that. We almost have this deficit mindset um, in our world where, Hey, I'm not good in math. Well, okay. Then don't go into a career field that focuses on math. Let's let's, are you great in art? Are you a great writer? Um, let's really celebrate that. Um, it's almost like you're a great athlete. And if you look at Charles Barkley and the way he golfs, I mean, you'd say, you know, he's not a great athlete, but you see him on the basketball court, he's one of the best ever. So we find out what, what are our strengths and talents? Let's focus on that and let's celebrate it every day. I mean, mm. what, what are your, you know, what did you do? What was your impact? Um, and one of the things that I was really um, positively impacted by the Covey 7 Habits, giving that recipe, giving that path, um, in terms of, you know, what are some ways that I can be the best version of myself, not only privately, but also public and the people that I work with. Um, and then we've also harnessed um, the work of Drew Dudley and his day one leadership and the idea that leadership is an everyday practice, not, you know, once I graduate, then I'll be a leader. Or once I get that dream job, then I'll be, be a leader. It really is every day who's better because of your words and actions. So mm. really ca causing and encouraging and motivating the people that we work with um, to say, okay, who's better today because of you and focus on that positive impact. Because if you can do it once, you can do it twice, then four times and 10 times and really getting the people that we work with to use this recipe of focusing on your strengths and impacting others on a daily and it could it doesn't have to be this grand event to be a leader it can be hey did you make someone feel more significant today yeah. okay and if you haven't you better help two people tomorrow <laughs> i have to assume in your higher ed space but just in life in general do you run into skeptics when you talk about hey i i'm focused on leadership and developing leaders and we have a leadership institute where people think oh that's that's cute matt that's a uh, soft skill, especially at the higher ed, right? Like there's sure. gotta be professors that look at you and like you have a PhD and you're talking about cute things like leadership. How, how do you help people understand what you're like? One, I guess a read a, a new definition of leadership so that it speaks to everybody. And two, get over some of that skepticism that I'm sure that they bring to your world every day in the higher ed space. Oh, I, I love that. And it's, it's really one of the things that motivates me most because we hear it quite often. We hear that it's fluff. We hear that, um, just like you said, isn't that cute? Um, <laughs> or it's not, it's not a real course. Um, and it's not a real 
course of study. And um, but I think one of the most powerful things that we've been able to do um, being in an institution of higher education is having the research and data to show, hey, watch us, you know, um, and, and I'll share this with you. I, I love it's not bragging if it's true. Um, so the idea of, of during COVID, we had a 1700% increase in enrollment in our leadership courses. Mm-hmm. So our students are best advertisement. They're telling their friends, they're telling their, um, you know, folks in their fr- fraternity and sorority, they're telling their teammates on their athletic team saying, Hey, this is different. This is not a course about something. It's, it's a course about them. And or it's a training or it's an event where we're bringing in TED Talk speakers, we're bringing in uh, folks from Covey, Carnegie, you name it, um, to come and help students get more confident or increase their ability to work with others. And it's it's really remarkable. Um, Literally, we had one of our members of upper echelon leadership at the university saying, where did you get those numbers? And you know, I, I, I was happy to share. I was like, it was from your team. You know, the we've gone from um, six to seven students in one of our final steps in our leadership minor um, to over 300 in two years. So uh, 900 students now go through our program um, every year where it was, you know, in the low 100s uh, a few years ago um, and 400% increase in events even during COVID, you know, so the idea of something ha- is happening here and once the folks in the higher ed um, administration levels and even folks in, in the community start to see the impact, um, they want to be part of it. Um, they want to say, okay, what are you doing? Why is this happening? And it really comes down to, it's almost like a concierge when you go to a really nice hotel. How can I make your experience? How can I make your stay better here? Um, not at the hotel, but at the university. And that's one of the things that we've really tried to listen to our students. What do you want? Oh, you want a career mentor. Let's do that. We'll call it Camp Osprey, Collegiate Achievement Mentoring Program, where every student has a career coach or someone who is doing their dream job. So rather than just learning about leadership from a text or from a class, you're also learning from someone who, hey, one day maybe I want to be Dustin. I want to help people become better leaders around the world, or I want to be a writer like, you know, Sean Covey um, will help you get there. Um, and it's it's really nice to see. And they value it. The students want that voice and that choice in their experience. And I think that's one of the things that um, we try to make that experience about them. What, what do you need? And let's see if we can make it happen. So how is the vision, like, what was the vision of the Taylor Leadership Institute when it started, if you can speak mm-hmm. to that, right? And how has it grown? Because it sounds like through COVID, your reach might have grown exponentially, or it might be on the cusp of growing exponentially to where right. it not just grows in your campus, but maybe impacts campus leaders across the country to rethink leadership for them. Well, the Institute started um, before I actually got to UNF, I was... Um, I got to UNF back in 2015, and I think the Institute had been four or five years into existence. Um, It was actually named after the uh, chair of the Board of Trustees from the University, Bruce Taylor, who I I stay in contact with. He's a Navy veteran, started his own engineering firm, doing some really great work, and he was really passionate about leadership and what that meant, even in the sciences, where many folks thought that it was a a soft skill and he was really passionate that he needed to be in sciences and technology in those STEM fields. Um, And a big portion of it in the past was the study of leadership and um, a lot of writing and a lot of um, uh, focus on understanding the basic concepts of leadership and maybe, you know, the different player players throughout history, you know, Hershey and Blanchard, Stodgill, all those foundational pieces. And we wanted to take it, not to lose that, not to lose the understanding of, of the history of leadership and how it has, you know, evolved over the years, but put it more into an action-based um, program um, in the idea of, having students experience um, guest speakers who are leaders in a variety of different fields, having students 
and faculty experience um, training that is taking place in the corporate world or you know the idea of a mentorship um, in career coaching and making the classes about what can you do now not just you know understanding the history of leadership which is important but we wanted to empower our students to be change agents now so as they're going into a variety of fields i don't care if it's it's military um, law enforcement sports technology they're taking these leadership skills and putting it into action as you're seeing kids i mean you've been around the higher education and you know k-12 for your whole career essentially as you're seeing kids come to college right now or just the real world after finishing high school what is there a difference in the skills that they may have used to have coming out of high school that they don't have now or is there a consistent you know it's it's always been this way that the gap of you know these type of specific skills that they need and what do you think k-12 schools need to do differently to help them be prepared and what do you think higher ed uh, institutions need to do to help kids get the skills they need to be successful in the real world. I love that because I think there's so much, there's, it's so important to have that flow from K through 12 into higher ed. It can't be this, you know, two separate silos, especially as being, you know, both my wife and I were, were um, elementary school teachers. I went into administration afterwards and I really think we've, gone so far in terms of pushing our students to be advanced and taking the most challenging classes and let's start um you know advanced placement courses as freshmen in high school and just to move it let's take you know dual enrollment so we have college done by the time we're nine years old yeah. like <laughs> let's see how fast we can do life and we're missing out on those experiences in those moments. One of my favorite books that we're implementing throughout our program is The Power of Moments by, um, I think it's Chip and Dan He. And we had them on, we had one of them on the podcast uh, last I, year. That's a great I, book. I, I mean, it, it is, honestly, has changed how we create moments for our students and, yeah. and really stop and say, okay, what's great about this? You know, you think about high school and graduation and Friday night football games and all these, you know, just really memorable things. You're never going to go back and look and, you know, that that midterm exam in my sophomore math class was, you know, groundbreaking for me. No, it's it's those moments that we're building in. And I think K through 12 and universities need to stop and, and remember who our clients are our customers are what do they need i mean we build in and this was before COVID. thankfully we can build it in again you know little things like we bring in a public speaking coach and someone who um can help students with um students ask for financial literacy we br brought one of our career mentors who's a vp of one of the you know major banks here to talk about you know credit cards when they go off to, you know now that they're starting college and even something as simple as a, as a handshake, we brought our military guys in, uh, a retired lieutenant general uh, who teaches one of our classes to teach teach a handshake and, um, you know, and teach some of our K through 12 students that we work with on how to tie a tie. And um, the idea, and it's amazing. They remember these things. They remember those moments when, um, you know, they created their own mini TED talk. Every student has to create their own TED talk to put in their LinkedIn page. And for many of them, they said, you know, it's the first time they really got to talk about themselves and not worrying about, you know, being boastful, but really celebrating who they are. And um, those moments we, we try to create. And I think I think we're missing an opportunity, K through 12 and higher ed, to rather than rush our through the students through, let's stop and remember you know, what a great experience college can be and how when they feel significant and part of something special, they stay. It, you know, it's one of the biggest, um, you know, focus areas here in the state of Florida is how do we uh, allow students, you know, the retention rates, the graduation rates, they stay when they feel part of something. Mm. And that's why those Saturday football games um, in Tallahassee and Gainesville and Athens, Georgia and, and Tuscaloosa, why those matter to universities, okay? Most of the people in the stands may not know one thing about football, okay? But they know those different experiences, those different things that we have, you know, the Gator Growl we used to have at UF or, 
you know, the experiences that we, we have here where we bring everyone to a game with a with the child that they're mentoring and you have them experience college for the first time. And, you know, and they don't forget it. I mean, we've literally had students change their career path because they've seen what this means. Yep. Um, one of my students, Sid Steele, and she's she's going to be taking my job one day, so I better be nice to her. Um, she's now going to the University of Kentucky to pursue a doctorate in leadership because she wants to do this. And she and was she on the fast track to, to be in the FBI uh, Career Academy, and she had a guaranteed job. And she dropped it and said, I, I drank the Kool-Aid here. This, this is pretty cool, and I, I want to be part of this. So and it's it's really amazing to see. Given the university choice, I assume she watched the football game a couple weekends ago, and that helped her flip one way or the other. Do I go to Florida? Do I go to Kentucky? And I'm going to go with Kentucky, right? That's it. I, I blocked her number for that week. <laughs> where my, my Gators had a. I, I took my son to that game. It was it was a tough watch, but that's all right. Um, you gave a nice shout out to Tallahassee. I've had a brutal six years. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's my hometown team. Anyways, we'll get back to the real subject at hand. So when. <laughs> When you think about, I mean, I know that your your work has grown and expanded to kind of leadership skills throughout the university, but I think you have a particular passion for helping athletes, right? And so I'm curious what you've seen at uh, your school now at UNF uh, of the impact it's having with those athletes, not just, you know, where it started at University of Florida with you, but how it's impacting folks around you currently. Yeah, it's it's been... Um really interesting to not only work with the student athletes, but really study what is happening when they have the opportunity to go through de deliberate um, and customized leadership training. Um, yep. We have, you know, and it, it's a variety of sports here. It, I saw it at UF and if you see in the background, um, you know, I, I started working with athletes back in the the Tim Tebow era and Billy Donovan and with basketball players and um, the softball teams there and something happened it was really powerful to see as a team once they had that mindset of we're going to focus on our strengths we're going to we're going to do the fist bumps the high fives we're going to celebrate each other every practice is going to leave, you know, we're not going to leave the field of the court unless we say, you know, what was our best moment today? What was great about today? You know, how were we proactive going into this challenge? How are we, you know, also taking care of ourselves? You know, we were focusing on, you know, sharpening the saw and that wellness 10 years ago, 12 years ago, before it became a thing that they were mandating. Um, and I think we saw that moment. I mean, we were assigning homework to to student athletes saying, go out and see the sunshine, you know, go, you know, go walk the beach, go do, you know, walk through a nature trail, like stop and go take care of you. Um, and then now, as we're really seeing this data coming out, you know, it, we've worked with seven teams here at the University of North Florida. Um, now, we don't have the big power five massive teams and massive resources. Okay, but what we do have is the luxury of, of working with students one-on-one, -on -one, um, having that intensive um, weekly trainings, it might be, um, that we have the opportunity to work with them. We work with seven teams, and over the last three years, each one of those seven teams saw best in program history in their performance as a team. And that's not, you know, that's not luck. That's not a coincidence. You know, we're seeing you know, walk-ons on the golf team become number 77 in the country um, out of, you know, out of thousands. We're seeing athletes, um, you know, go professional where they never thought they had it in themselves because they have this imposter syndrome around, you know, oh, I'm not at a power five or um, um, I'm at a mid-major. I'm only at a mid-major. And that confidence building and the ability to not only you know, improve who they are, but others around them yep. um, is so powerful to see. We had um, even one activity. We had a, one injured player was out for a few weeks and they, they were at a, a competition and they said, Dr. Olson, what can I do? And I'm like, all right, you know, you can't improve if you don't measure what you're doing. You, you know, you're an athlete. I know everything you do is about the numbers. I said, I need a hundred fist bumps, you know, to your teammates. And they did, and they were in third place, ended up winning. And, you know, then you go back to the research, 
a stand, I think it was a Stanford study that, that looked at the Golden State Warriors. They had the most body contact and fist bumps and high fives, and they win more, you know, and it's just, it's not just talent. It's this, you know, family mindset and this um, safety, support, and significance we preach and teach to them all the time. And we're starting to see those gains, like this is different. And for many of them, they're feeling something that, and they've, they've even shared with us, they've never felt this confident in who they are, but also with the people around them. Um, and it's, it's a really powerful to see. Uh, we presented um, in a global journal on this. We presented overseas. Um, we have a partnership with uh, our uh, university in Ireland next summer to help them in, with the Gaelic sports um, society, with some larger group over there. So it's really interesting to see that, um, you know, we work with the Jacksonville Jaguars trying to build some, some um, collaboration and um, confidence in their organization. So that, that's where we're seeing the biggest impact in terms of our athletes is they have the ingredients, but how do we make them great chefs in terms yeah. of what, what they're doing? Um, even the coaches. I mean, we, we work with three major teams last year, uh, last spring, all three A-Sun Coach of the Year. Um, because the coaching wasn't just with the players, it was with them. And they were texting me, hey, watch this. Okay, here are some great stats. Here are some great activities we did. So it became very deliberate. It was yeah. almost like being part of a, you know, starting a new fitness regimen. You're going to the, you have a, you have a trainer. Yep. These folks started to use our leadership resources as their leadership coach and trainer. And it really changed who they are and what they did. So when you think about that kind of impact that you know you're having on your campus with athletes or without, you know, our non-athletes, right? Uh, what, what would you like to see higher education do all across the country? Because we talked earlier, you know, you've been exposed, University of Florida, NC State. You know, I can think about my, as we're talking, I went to SMU in Dallas, Texas, and think about nice. things that we had and didn't have. And what you're speaking of, again, if it's, if it's led the right way with the right impact, I think you guys could have life-changing impact on campuses everywhere. So what, what would you like higher ed institutions to have in all of their schools around leadership? What does that look like to you? Um, I would love to see it be less reactive and more proactive in terms of let's be ahead of the curve. Let's not check a box and say, yes, we're going to, this is our wellness week. Okay. This is our, yes, they, we, we sat through a training and we had to do this, but being more proactive and say, okay, how do we create the best opportunities for not only our student athletes, but for all of our students to feel significant on campus, to feel valued. How do we build in these opportunities for them the second they step, stepped on campus? Okay, when I took over our leadership institute, no freshman or first year students could take a leadership course because it was thought that they weren't ready to, to, or they weren't mature enough to be leaders. And that was the first thing I'm like, get rid of that. Get rid of that is absolutely absurd. I I want my I want kindergarten students going through this. I I you know I had the privilege of being K through 12. I went to the Education Disney World, which is A B Combs in in Raleigh, North Carolina, Muriel Summers. I and mean, I was so blown away by that place <laughs> and what was happening. We moved, we moved there. My wife worked for Muriel, my son, I have pictures of him, you know is you know muriel's like our unofficial god godmother to my kids because of that one visit it was literally education disney world and seeing what it was what was happening with those students i was like we we need this at every at every level of education even in the corporate world the companies that i work with guess what the ceos the you know, everything from military contractors with was no, north of Grumman to, you know, NFL teams. I'm doing the same thing. What do you do well today? Okay. Uh, do you know your people that you're leading? Like all these, the same ingredients that we're, you know, working with college students and we work with, with high school students, getting them ready for college. Yep. You can, you can change a company by doing these same things you can change a nonprofit. you you name it i don't care if you're running a starbucks or you know you're 
running a you know Fortune 500 company. These these principles, I, I think, being proactive and getting the second students come on campus, getting them some exposure to leadership development, giving them support, giving them a mentor. Every one of our students gets a mentor, whether it be out in the the career field or here on campus. Um, I I think it really brings back that that mindset of of the do they feel safe, significant, okay, and supported yep. throughout their process. And I think that's, you know, if I were to tell any university, start that from day one and leadership can be that key ingredient. Yeah, part of, you know, I, I was telling you a little bit earlier, part of my journey was, you know, I was just a uh, jock. I mean, I, I love school, I did well in school, but I really just wanted to play basketball. And my dad had me signed up for what we called Mustang Corral, which is kind of like a fish camp that Texas A&M has like a kind of a not I call it an indoctrination camp because it's ridiculous, but it's a, a way to get like people passionate about the university and get to know people and you get exposed to leadership. And that was the first time in my life where I was like, oh, you guys have leadership programs that I can help build here. That sounds great. And I just started geeking out on those things. And that that one camp changed the future of my life. And, you know, I'm still close with the woman who helped lead it um, just because I believe in that power. So that I, what you said to me really resonates with my own personal experience. The second thing is I think about, and again, I don't need you to have an answer for it, but so like that gets you the first wave, right? So say it, say you got, I'm going to make it a small number just for our understanding, but say that's a thousand kids that are coming in and you get, you know, 200 in that wave. You got 800 left. How do we find them throughout? And so, uh, and make sure that they have leadership opportunities. They may not be proactive about it, but to your point, they may have classes that they're supposed to take that mm -hmm. are developing those skills and helping them identify their strengths as they're in those classes. Because when I hear you talk, I think about my friends who were convinced they were going to be doctors. They get to, you know, sophomore year or chem and realize that <laughs> they're not going to be, they're not going to be doctors anymore. Right. Yeah. And the re reality is all they wanted to do is be successful. And they had in their mind, success or future career is only A, B, or C. They didn't think about the thousands of options they could have. If they would have focused on their strengths or been a, 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 had those revealed to them earlier, I think they might've had the courage to be like, I don't even like chemistry. I'm going to go this route. Have you seen that? Is that something that resonates with you? Well, in, I, I think that's so powerful. And I am going to catch you on one thing, Dustin, the idea that you were, you said, I'm just a jock. Just know that <laughs> most, most don't, we, we don't allow just and only in our, our leadership <laughs> vocabulary. So I, I appreciate the fact that. that you were a jock and were an athlete, you learned how to work well with others. You know, <laughs> you learned how to win and lose and overcome adversity. So don't, don't, you know, there's a reason why you are, you know, doing podcasts and, and influencing, you know, nationally, you know, leaders around, you know, leaders around the country. So, you know, I'll, I'll catch you on that. But um, in terms of, you know, that idea of, of um, helping people find themselves, that's one of the, we take also, I, I would, if I were to share with any university or higher ed, even K through 12 is don't let leadership only live in the business school. Um, and the idea of let it let leadership resonate in everything. I don't care if it's the fine arts to, um, you know, technology to elementary education. And the idea of, of letting people find out what their gifts and talents are and then say and find out early. So it's not and we you see it. Every, everyone has seen it. The student junior year saying, I don't even like this major. <laughs> and that's why we're, we're having students, you know, majoring in interdisciplinary studies or general studies. Cause they're like, I don't know what my thing is. Um, and I think that's, that's really powerful for us to, and it's, it's our job from the get go to help uh, folks find that. Someone. And if they don't know, help them, you know, go work with an entrepreneurial team and, and folks that just, create great things or just surround them with great people to help them find, you know, their gifts and talents and maybe their path and maybe create a brand new path that no one's, you know, gone before. Well, it sounds like that habit eight uh, book that Dr. Cudden yeah. wrote a while back of find your voice is something that keeps yes. coming up is 
it's up there. Yeah. Like that, that to me is something that, you know, I taught trigonometry. So I always wanted, you know, I knew most of the kids that came in were not going to love being a part of that. And so it's how do they feel successful in the midst of not being successful, maybe in that particular subject, sure. right? I have a couple of quick questions for you before we hop out. It's the same rapid fire questions we have. And then I'm going to sure. tee you up to kind of leave us with some greatness. So our first question that we rapid fire with everybody is what's a habit or discipline that you use every day or every week that helps you be the best version of yourself? that's wow that's powerful um i think and well i know my most important job is being a dad my three sons um and the habit that i i implement daily is trying to bring some of the same things that i teach back home to my my sons and um then it resonates with their friends so i i'm known as as the leadership dad and every summer when I'd be, you know, at home, I'd there'd be like cadre of kids. And we just had this like leadership camp and every day would be the, the same type of things that got so used to me saying, all right, where's your greatest success today? What's the challenge you overcame? And, and I think the habit that I have, I have to do for me and remind myself is to do the same things that I'm teaching to my, my children um, my students and the idea of what did you do well? Because quite often we get caught in this mindset of the to-do list and, okay, this is a great start, but what about next year when we're turning our leadership minor into a major or, or what about the next book? We had our, you know, we had a, our new textbook come out that we wrote with the College of Business and everyone's like, okay, when's your next coming? You know, when's the next one coming out? And I'm like, all right. And you want to keep going and sprinting, but at the same time, I'm, if I'm going to be the one that's telling others to celebrate and celebrate your success and your impact, I better be doing it. So I think every day, what, did, how did I get better? What did I do? You know, what was my success? And then who's better today because of my words and actions. And if it's like midnight and I haven't done that, I'm texting someone, I'm emailing someone mm. saying, I value you. I appreciate you. I love that. I appreciate that. Um, so you've got a lot of books behind you. You just showed one that you've authored. So besides the one that you've authored or the <laughs> ones that you've authored, what book or books, you don't have to narrow it down, have really been influential to your life or that you've read lately that you just can't get off your brain? Oh, goodness. Um, uh, how much time do we have? Um, you know, it's, it's funny. The, the seven habits I still have, I think I showed when we had the Covey team doing that documentary on our work. Right. Um, I showed them this like tattered, like little Covey handout uh, that I got after going through the training. It was, and they're like, wow, that's like an antique. You just trying to sell that on eBay. Um, but I always keep that with me as, as, and I don't refer to it, but it serves as a reminder. Um, hmm. Am I living those habits daily? Um, and it, it like sticks in my wallet and I'm, you know, it, it just serves as that reminder. Um Day one by Drew Dudley, um, you know, with our mentoring groups, we use the um, Jonathan Catherman's Manual to Manhood and Girls Guide to Conquering Life. Um, and I love Catherman. Yeah, Power of Moments, gosh, I mean, this, and, and the Eighth Habit. I mean, that one quote with, you know, where Dr. Covey shares, you know, the, this redefined um, definition of leadership about communicating people's worth and value. Um, so that they see it in themselves. I mean, that's that's a foundation of our whole leadership institute, um, and it's really transformed who we are. So, um, you know, those are just a few. I could. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to read off behind you. Those are those are good. Those are really good. Yeah. Especially, I wasn't expecting a Jonathan Catherman name drop today, which I love. So that's uh, if people don't know who Jonathan Catherman, they need to go Google him real quick and go check out. Oh his yeah, work. he's he serves as a, a mentor. Um, Great, great quick story. He served as a mentor to one of our students. And when we first met him, this young man, Taj, um, lacked confidence, lot, lacked a lot of support in his life. And he, we said, you know, he was six foot seven, former basketball player. He stopped playing basketball and, and you see him and you say, okay, you know, come back and play basketball again. You, you know, you're really good at, at this. And he said, I just want to be a poet. I want to be a writer. And everyone, it was almost like a record scratch, like what? And he, and it was such a drop the mic moment when three years later, after being mentored by Jonathan, he published, his, uh, published one of his poems. Uh, he's now in Dallas, graduated from college, first one in his family graduating. 
Uh, he's now in Dallas working as a uh, leadership mentor. Once again, changed his whole career to do this. This, you know, this mindset of, of how do we empower others? Um, and it's really cool to see. So yeah, Jonathan, John's a great guy. And, and like I said, those, those Covey resources really serve as um, the seven habits, the eighth habit um, really serve as, and now the, the college student resources and leader you, they serve as the foundation. Um, and it's really changing what we do and the gravitas and the um, and, and the credentials we're able to hold when it comes to working with our career partners, uh, future employers for our students. And it, it's so much fun. It's so much fun saying that, you know, our students are leaving with something more than just a grade. Right. And uh, I think that's what's, what's most powerful. That's awesome. So uh, anybody who doesn't know your geographic location down in the Jacksonville area might not know it takes like 30 minutes to drive everywhere. And so <laughs> you have plenty of drive time between A and B. And I would say, uh, I don't know if you listen to music during that time. So it could be while you're driving the 30 minute drives everywhere or while you're working out, what, what kind of music on your playlist, either the music or the artist or the, you know, Miley Cyrus, I assume part of the USA is probably a, a greatest hit for you. But outside that, of that, what's, what's on your playlist? That, that's it. That's my ringtone. Oh, um, <laughs> it's, it's funny. You're going to see, and this is coming from, you know, I'm coming from Boston and, and um, you know, I grew up in kind of an old school Italian and Irish neighborhood. So um whenever it gets stressful here at the office it's frank sinatra so i throw on sinatra and uh tony bennett you name it uh, dean martin but mostly sinatra to uh in and my students tease me a little bit they they've asked me are, are you 100 years old or <laughs> you know um but it's That's it's cool. nice it adds you know everything from you know that to you know my 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 kids playlist they've they've taken over all my my spotify playlist so yeah. I, i'm at the gym i'm listening to the most you know absurd you know hardcore rap that i can't figure out how to you know change the playlist so yeah. you know i i do have to work out every day i take my my sons or even work out with some of our students here on campus um just to humble myself when i think i'm actually in shape so um yeah it's mo mo they do tease me with uh with the Sinatra, um, you know, playlist, but hey, hey I'm not going to lose that. These two right here, the eight and the six-year-old, they'll they'll sing some "Fly Me to the Moon." Uh, oh, they see, uh, that's like it. it. <laughs> <laughs> that we listen to that here. It's not it's not the first thing that comes up, but uh, we make sure that they're exposed to some Sinatra for sure. I love it. I love um, it. All right, last question. We'll let you have your day back. So you're either uh, surrounded by great leaders, you're constantly in communication with people who are trying to help people become better leaders. What's the best piece of advice or the most recent piece of advice that you've either come across, seen, or given yourself that you think everybody really needs to just sit with for a bit? What are the flowers, not the weeds? Um, and really focus and celebrate who you are um, and the gifts and talents you have. Um, in this society, 80, what is it? 87% of all news stories are negative. What you see on social media um, can often derail or, or diminish who you think you are. You know, we're facing this whole imposter syndrome mindset that, that we work with, but literally every day um, is an opportunity for you to show your greatness. And even if it's just influencing one person, um, making someone feel significant at the checkout line at, at Starbucks or uh, someone you work with, a colleague, a friend, a family member. Um, you know, as Drew, Drew Dudley said in his TED Talk, you know, we, we you know, celebrate birthdays where all, all you have to do is not die for 365 days. But we really never take the time to celebrate each other and the people in our network, whether it be friends, family. So really take the time every day to, to look at your you know, get to versus have to and, and let people know of their value and significance every time you see them. That's awesome. Well, we appreciate it. And uh, I am inspired just given my own track record with leadership with athletes, as well as uh, on campus leadership by what you're trying to accomplish. And I wish you nothing but the best as you guys make impact your community, but also hopefully make a big impact on other communities. I know the 
the higher ed world, you know, as well as I do, is a pretty small world when you start thinking about conferences and networking and all those things. So like, if you can continue to get that data, I think you can probably make a big uh, ripple throughout the country um, pretty easily. I don't know if it's yeah. easy, but once you get the data, I think that ripple becomes a wave. Yeah, we're, we're so excited about it. And open invitation to you anytime you want to come down, talk to our students, you know, spend some time here at, in Jacksonville, Florida, at the University of North Florida. We, we'd love to have anyone down here come see what we're doing, uh, especially when it's cold where you are. Um, <laughs> So we get the reciprocal visits when it's, you know, 107 degrees here in July. So well, I'll, uh, I'll be, I'll be down there in November. We'll, we'll, we'll reach out. I'm, I'm down in Florida a lot, so I will definitely reach out. And, you know, I know that you guys have a top golf right near your campus. And so uh, we can challenge a couple of those golf students that you talked about to teach us actually how to play golf. <laughs> that would be, a, that would be fantastic. So <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, Matt, this is awesome. Appreciate you. Please support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, uh, podcast on Apple or Spotify, and help us celebrate the beautiful, messy work of shaping human potential.